I'll share with you on how we can use Java Authentication and Authorization Services or GAS to help us with the authentication and also authorization in our web pages. So this JAS provides a way for Java application to authenticate and enforce access control based on user identities. It's a Java framework that allows pluggable authentication modules enabling the integration of various authentication mechanism. Yes, and we will have um, several uh, features, built-in features yeah, that simplify the process of authentication and authorization and to check the user's identities and also yeah, um, roles. So so I'm going to start with Eclipse. I'm going to open my Eclipse. We are going to create a new project, dynamic web project, and we're going to start by use 2.5 because we want to have uh, web.xml included in our project. So this project we mean then. Uh, focus on the credit company. Some things like union pay or an evil company such as the NG to help. Users record the application to use the email. Maybe TNG would be a good name, TNG. Post. Everything is not relevant to this project. Close the world. So now web app. I will create several basic files, and the first one will be the login file. So this is our login file. If someone info regarding to our website, speed form. To organize our inputs, I recommend that you put them in a table. It's easy to do. 
Any videos? Yes, yes, as well. So the first one will be a label. We have this cloud password. Um, okay, so next, uh, the name for each of these must follow a specific convention. Um, example for the name, you must use J underscore username. And for the password, And for the password, it's J password. Welcome to today's video lecture. In this session, we'll be delving into the crucial topic of Java EE security. For this lecture, there will be several key points that I want to highlight. The first one will be introduction to Java EE security, authentications and authorizations, Java authentications and authorization service, securing web applications, fine grain access control, secure coding practices. As many of you might be aware, Java EE, Java Platform Enterprise Edition, is a powerful platform for developing enterprise level applications. Now, when it comes to enterprise level application, security is paramount. We'll be exploring how Java EE provides robust mechanism to ensure the security of our web application. Web applications plays an integral role in our digital landscape, facilitating interactions, transactions, and exchange of sensitive information. Whether it's banking application handling finance and taxation or healthcare portal managing patient data, the stakes are high. Security breaches not only jeopardize the integrity of the data, but can also have severe consequences for organizations and users alike. Therefore, understanding and implementing effective security measures is non-negotiable. Today, we will specifically focus on Java EE's tool for ensuring the security of our web application. Within the realm of Java EE security, 
one key components we'll be exploring is the security check. This is a feature that plays a pivotal role in user authentication within Java EE applications. In simpler terms, it's the mechanism that ensures the right users have access to the right resources within our applications. Throughout this session, you will not only understand how J security check works, but also explore related concepts and best practices to fortify our web applications against potential security threats. So buckle up as we dive into the world of Java EE security and J security check. J security check serves as a critical mechanism for handling user authentication within Java EE applications. At its core, it is designed to address one of the foundation aspects of security, user authentication. But what exactly does that mean? User authentication is the process of verifying the identity of a user ensuring that the person attempting to access a system or application is indeed who they claim to be. J Security Check provides the tools and functionalities necessary to implement robust authentication mechanism within Java EE applications. As you can see in this diagram, J Security Checks help in verifying the identity of users accessing a Java EE applications. It ensures that only legitimate and authorized users are granted access to the system. By enforcing strong user authentication, J Security Check plays a pivotal role in protecting sensitive resources within the applications. This includes confidential data, privileged functionalities, and other critical areas that require control and access. So in J security check, you will have several conventions. The most basic one is for the input text box, where you have to name them. If J underscore username for the user input and J password. So this two must be exactly the same. And then we also need to configure the WebXML to define the security constraints, roles, and realms for your application. Okay. So run this. OK, so we have this kind of structure. So I'm going to another page. So from here, we will go to the next page, which is the index.jsp. Right now we have login.jsp. Create index.jsp. So index.jsp so this is where user will be directed if they have completed their authentication or authorization in the login.jsp
Okay. Next. Um, Aaron PSP. So when user enter the wrong credential, you will go to this Aaron.jsp. No man, three page. Next, um, on JSP. Now we have four Java server pages found. Next, we need to configure the web plot XML to create the users. So in this web.xml, we will have a standard markup to show or to to create our the pages that are restricted and the types of user that can Okay, now we'll delve, dive into an essential aspect of securing Java EE applications. The configuration of security constraints in a web.xml file. Specifically, we'll explore a scenario where we're protecting the resource 
under the admin section accessible at any URL pattern in our application. So in this is my web.xml. So we'll start with give it a readable name using the display name markup. Make it uh, identical. And then move on to the security section, security constraint section. So here we have name our security constraint action and mean section for clarity. We define a web resource collection under web resource collection, you mean CP and specifying a URL pattern of slash star, meaning any URL under our application. Now within our constraint, we have specified that only users with the role employee can access this admin section. This enforces role-based access control, ensuring that only users with the role employee can access the protected resource. In short, this configuration ensures that any URL under our application context is protected. Access is restricted to users with the employee role. Next is the login config section. This section is crucial for configuring how users are authenticated particularly when we are using form-based authentication in our Java EE application. Start this element is the gateway for configuring authentication mechanism in our Java EE application. So in this line, we have specified the authentication method we use. In this case, it's set to form. This tells the server that we're expecting the user to submit a form for authentication. Within form login config, we define the pages involving in our form-based authentication process. Form login page points to the page where user enter their credentials. In our case, it's slash login JSP. The next one, form error dash page, specifies the page users are redirected to in case of authentication error, set to slash error JSP. This configuration set the stage for our form-based authentication Users will be directed to slash login JSP for authentication. And in case of errors, they will be directed to slash error JSP. Right. Um, now that we the stars of our security show, the security role declarations in, in the web.xml. This is where we assign roles to our actors, ensuring that they are ready for their roles in our Java EE application. In a world of security, roles are like the characters in our favorite movie. They have distinct parts to play. And here where the, we define their roles in our applications. The role inside security role it's like giving a character a name and defining their role. In this script, we name one of the characters employee. Our character's employee is ready to perform this role in our security. It has the same name script as in our auth constraint. And as you can see in the line of 15, it's like um, saying, hey, actor named employee, you got a specific role in this scene.
power of constraints and security role share the same role because we're saying only actors with the role employee get access to this part of our application. Now I want to configure our users. So I open the service folder in my project explorer. Double click Tomcat users. And here, I will create some users. So to comment this line. That's right. I'm going to add a few more. If we can adjust accordingly. And password will be the same. So I'm going to put this employee. And put that one. That's this um, username. So, and I'm going to ignore this first and see whether we can run this website. It's on the new degree potential. So here I have created a username of concrete page the password of concrete page. So I have created users in my server. Let me test this out. So I will click to my index.jsp and run this. Since I don't have the credential, so I have to go to 
we will we will directly to index.jsp. So I'm going to do something here. If I put a wrong one, if I click submit, it will move, will move me to this login or error.jsp. If I click login again, it's config which is my username and my password. Click submit. I'll be redirected to x.jsp. I'm going to show a few more application from the authorizations and authentication that we have done where we will have two different set of users users one that can view and one that can update and read the database so we need a jar file, and I prefer to use GTDS to access the SQL Server, and you will place them in the lib folder in the web INF folder. So, I'm going to have my GTDS here. I'm going to copy this. Goes here. In this library, I'm going to open it by System Explorer. So in lib here, I'm going to paste in every jar file that you wish to apply. You put in this folder. Okay. Any jar file that you wish to apply, employ in your web application, you put in into that folder. So you can copy a job file, find this web file folder and paste. Next, I'm going to create a new file. This one, it doesn't have to have authorization and authentication. Anybody that uh, didn't go through the login file, login page, then insert data inside. That's going to give it the name of register, register. We are going to import the java.sql. I'm going to declare a few statement here. Mission. Statement. Statement. Can you still try catch result set? If there is 
ada merah, maybe you need to look in the laundry as well. Why do results help? Cannot be resolved to the back. So, if you notice. I think um, there is nothing that we have done wrong. And, Only result set. Oh, yes, because the S here is in small. It's not okay. Yes, that's right. See, the error is gone. Right? So I'm going to use a try catch for this. First, I'm going to load the JTDS driver. So this is standard dot source forge dot jtds dot jdbc dot driver and we establish the connection. else ADBC ATDS SQL Server and then we put local post here. 43 is the standard port for our SQL Server. And we also see if our SQL Server has suitable database. Uh -huh. All right, I think I'm going to go with North Wind slash North Wind. Stream 
user, the user for the database. Password. Tie them together. Manager. Manager. Yeah. URL user And um, is statement it is we need our SQL or the insert. Stream, Screen is Insert into see the users to enter insert into some table. Okay, let's say uh, use this one. Yeah. But I'm going to minimize the column. Yeah. So into two dots. Values. So we I'm going to be able to do all this column.
Este es el es Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Execute. Okay. Once we are done, maybe we can send the users to some page. Thank you, page. So, we direct. We are going to close our statement. State one dot close. We are going to close our function. I guess to see if uh, any error, okay. and we can debug them much easier in this section. Easy. E dot green. Spec. Yes. We have several variable that has really speaks This one we this. And these two, these two variables is a parameter where we get from the insert page. We have done that. We 
will not mute. Yeah. I want to make new more modifications where uh, admin can access certain pages if they can, uh, can go to the login page where I have error index, login and logout files inside the admin folder. So this admin folder is restricted for those only who have logged in and are identified as employee in our web XML. So as you can see here, I have made my modification. So um, we have this admin resources. So the admin folder is a VIP section reserved for special guests. It's like saying, hey, only employee role people are allowed here. And then we have this public resources. Open to everyone. Register.jsp and thank you.jsp. It's a friendly public areas where anyone, anonymous user, can join in. So, this employee here is like a VIP, and only this role can access this section. So, you can see here. This is only reserved for employee, whereas register into JSP and thank you JSP can be accessed by anonymous user. We need to try. So. So I think it works. See this in our table. Yes, here we have inside our table. Next, if I wish to access any of the file inside my web. And we pull my screen. You can see that I have all the files I have created earlier. I put them in the admin, and those with the credential can access this file. For example, if I wish to go to index.dsp, say I want to run this. It will redirect me to the login page. This login page. Whereas if I want to access register or create 
can just run this. I can do the insert process here without any authorization. So when the user log in as an admin, not only they can go to these pages, but also we can let them to edit or to delete result. Example, the process. Say the user has entered new data inside. Start with this user screen rounds. Say product. Okay, so process execute. I have no doubt here. Let's say I want to log in as an admin and I want to edit or delete that product. So I go to index first. We go to index first. Complete the authorization and authentication. And then now oh, we can go and edit any of this. Okay. So if you have any problem, feel free to go to this URL to see the changes or any code that you wish to study. Okay. 